Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online meeting number 25. Uh, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't able to be here right now. So let's go ahead and jump into the agenda because I always end up talking about the agenda on this slide instead of the agenda slide. So we'll do triage and Sean, who is here, has asked about feature 3249. So we'll talk about that after doing triage. Um, I expect triage will take us near zero time. Um, unless well, we'll see. Then there's another question that Sean asked about backwriting whips. In other words, writing a whip for features that are already complete. So we'll go ahead and talk about that and different thoughts and things like that. And then we'll take any questions, comments by people that were less organized um, than myself and Sean um, to get their questions in before the meeting started. Um, and me who set up the meeting <laughs> the night before the meeting. Well, nine hours before the meeting. All right. Is that good, Bob? Uh, yes. All Sounds right. Fabulous. Okay, Sounds go. fabulous. So let's go do triage. Uh, triage through the web. Um, so we still have this thing here, uh, this preprocessor enrichment thing. Um, we left a comment on it last time. No. So I, I'm thinking maybe we should leave a comment on it saying, hey, yeah, you know, if you want to discuss this, let's go have a discussion in Wix devs. Um, and then at some point, I guess we kind of resolve it as, you know, suspended and unless they want to bring it back, but do so in a way that next week I say we suspend it and do so in a way that says, hey, we're suspending this because nobody else is working on this, but if you want to work on it, let's go talk about it on Wix devs. So either we could do that next week or I could be convinced that we should do it this week. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, I think I, I would lean toward providing a bit of context about uh, why maybe this isn't such a great idea. Yeah, I mean, as an extension, I'm fine for them to go experiment with an extension and all that kind of stuff and see what comes to it. But not as a language feature. And somewhere in here they said, you know, at the bottom of their all their comments, they said, you know, I think about how to implement this preprocessor section, and I'm like, yeah, okay. And you do as you wish with preprocessor extensions. So, or should we just go, cool, go preprocessor extension, not a Wix feature, have a nice day. Um, Although there's some votive stuff he wants to do, which would be votive stuff. Well, but I think it wouldn't be necessary with a preprocessor extension, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh so, yeah. How about how about just this? This is something you can implement, or you should be able to implement as a preprocessor extension. Um, so it's not really a Wix feature that you have to worry about suspended. Cool. I'm done with that. And be nice, because you know the guy did a lot of work. So it's like yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. It's just not. I wish he would have done the work on the mailing list, because then we could have get a little more direction. Earlier. Front. Yeah. Yeah. Before all that work, but all right. Um cannot process hung. <laughs> Not a great a, title. Is, you, can it, you check a, heat a, for this file? All right. I'm gonna cannot extract calm data. So there DLL is hanging. They need to go debug it. This is not unusual and not horribly unusual in heat. So, is this yeah. something? It, no. It's crashing because I don't think it's crashing. I think it's hung. I think the DLL is like trying to do something and it's stuck or something. Specific. Oh my God. Specifically, because of how heat. Sets up the environment for for yeah, com. Sure. Oh, interesting. I, I you, you'll see this every once in a while. It really depends on what the code does inside of it, you know. And it can do anything, right? And so if it starts going, hey, where's this key? I don't find this key. I go do this. Oh, then they end up in a block of code they never tested. Gets an error condition, and it ends up never coming back or something. Oh, interesting. Almost always, that's what I've seen it be. So anyway, they need to go debug their process here, unfortunately. But it shouldn't be that hard, right? It's just basically start debugging from heat, 
step through and, and say, you know, only my code, and then eventually they'll get into their code and just start debugging. Although this assumes that... Uh, man, it assumes that it's their code that they're talking about. If it's not their code, it should go back to the owner and say, hey, give us a merge module or something for this. Wow, something I never thought I'd hear from you. Sorry, merge modules are the way to pass data across organizations. There's no better way today. Unless they all use Wix, and then you could use Wix. Wix, yeah, yeah, Wix libs. Okay. Why not Wix libs? Right. If you want to assume the people that you're getting stuff from are using Wix, then that's great. Or if you know they are, then you're right. Binary Wix libs will work great. If they're using some other tool, a merge module may be the way to go. But anyway, all, all in all, this is not a Wix bug. Um, unless maybe, you know, Heat is not setting some reg key that has to be there for every deal hell in the world, and this is the first time we've ever seen it, that that seems unlikely. But it's always possible. If so, we get a bug on that, not on the fact that their DLL is getting hung. Uh, yeah, given the... I was looking at the file to see if there was anything useful. Um, okay, I don't recognize that language, so I can't really speak to uh, anything about it. So, uh, what would you like to do? I, I say it's, it's not a it's not a bug. If they need help debugging their DLL, they can go to Wix users because we're happy to do that. Um, but we're not going to do it in a bug, and we're not going to debug his file. That's all done. Two bugs, one we left over from last time, and one much quieter week than the last week, last two weeks or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Which all is right. kind of funny since we got a build-up this week. Uh, yeah, nobody's caught up yet. Um, so um, let's talk about this feature. Uh, Sean wanted to talk about this feature, and his question basically came down to, you know, what did we think of this feature? Um, and so it's open, and I think it's a matter of someone taking it and doing it. Um, there are questions about how uh, we should um, should go about um, implementing it, which, of course, is a good discussion on the mailing list and stuff like that. Um, I don't think we were against um, allowing something at the end of the install to run to use the elevation from burn to launch some config file. And the trick was to provide the um, the engines to allow the BA, actually it doesn't need to be the BA because we already provided it, to basically provide the window handle such that when this config tool is launched, it launches on top of the UI instead of behind it. Well, I don't, we we wanted to we we didn't want the async aspect. We didn't want you to be able to because you can do this today, right? You can run an exe at the at the end of your chain, but the UI is going to possibly be messed up based on on Z order, right? Right, and it will happen before it'll happen before apply complete, which means that you're kind of in this interesting case where your UI is going to still your your um, your BA UI could still be showing and this config tool could come up. So it might be nicer to be able to say, run this async thing when I quit instead of when I finish my elevate, my chain. Yeah, right, right Sean, that's the, the major problem. Because right. otherwise you could do this just by launching 
you know, create processing from your from your BA. Right. Now, I don't think we, we definitely don't want to do engine run elevated file name and arguments because then the BA could launch any uh, executable on your machine elevated, and that means the and the BA can be injected because it's in the user mode process, so that's a huge problem. So it needs yeah. to be something in the manifest. So it needs to be defined in the manifest, and then it's a matter of saying, when does it run, right? And like you said, we could do it if you put it in the chain today, but this was more about putting it in the, um, no, being async and putting it like closer around quit so that it would pop at the end of the BA kind of thing. And then yeah, go. yeah, that that does make it more interesting because, well, I mean, I suppose we're not going to, we want to retain all the standard things about, you know, whether a package is, well, I want to call it a package, but, you know, is it downloaded? It has conditions when it runs, maybe, um, you know, it, it, it might have extra payloads, stuff like that. I think we want to treat it as a package. Uh, whether it's authored in the chain or as a separate thing, I, yeah, that's interesting to talk about. Yeah, that's true. I, I haven't thought through all the authoring scenarios. So at a high level, I was one level higher than that. I think that's generally the user scenario we want for it. Um, I, I, I'm in favor of this to the extent that, that the, there is a legitimate need a mostly legitimate need to, to have, you know, kicking off some tool that finishes the install. Yeah, and um, so Sean's asking, you know, if the BA can't send the path to the XE, how will the engine be able to find it? And, well, you'll have to define the path to the executable that you launch in the engine somewhere. We don't want the BA to pass an arbitrary string to say, here, go run this executable elevated. Because then what someone could do is at the end of your install, they could hook your, they could toss a thread into your UI process, which of course is running, and then have it run format C at the end of your bundle. And it would run elevated, you get no prompt, everything would just happen, and you'd get nothing. So you can't just run a random executable. It's why the manifest is all signed, and we're all careful about getting only the manifest data passed from into the engine side and so on and so forth to make sure that an arbitrary process cannot inject a little bit of data into a user mode process and cause elevated stuff to run. You're, Sean, you're, you're asking about running an XE that's been installed by another package, right? Oh, yes. um, maybe we wouldn't do that. Maybe you'd install the config tool as part of You'd include it as part of the bundle instead the, of yeah being an installed thing. If you look at something like like SQL Server or TFS, and I'm sure there are other examples, it's like bits get installed, then you run the config tool that you've also installed because that's how they run things. This this is more convenience that you're kicking off that first configuration, one, immediately because it's necessary, you can't do anything without running configured, and two, without the second UAC prompt. Right, so we need to find a good way of finding the thing such that it's not an arbitrary yeah, yeah. XE pass to the engine saying, here, please launch format for me, elevated. Right. Um, which will be a matter of going in the engine and seeing, basically we can get it into the manifest, I think the engine runs its own searches. I forget. It's been too long since I looked at that code. So we need to go look at the the security the angles of those. Yeah, the elevated process. Interesting. Because if Avery does things, then you could do it based on searches. Oh, I see. Yeah. Although searches usually run... Uh, very early in detect, before detect, or first in detect. So then you end up probably needing to rerun searches after apply <laughs> if you're trying to find something that's been installed during apply. 
Yeah, all right. So we need to. to we need to. So again, <laughs> yeah. I'm not a, this this feature. I'm not against this feature. It's just a matter of getting these particular details sorted out, which I don't think we're yeah. going to do on this call. But um, that gives you a flavor of the kinds of things we're talking about in here. Does that help, Sean? Since you're the one asking about this feature, yeah. So uh, didn't say it was going to be easier. Uh, yeah, and and I haven't moved this thing forward because I hadn't thought through all of the the issues. I just knew there were a number of issues to go think about. Um, so people are like, yeah, this is really easy. Yeah, if you don't want to worry about security, it's really easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the problem, right? It, it can't be. It, it can't let the BA run something elevated, arbitrary. Yeah. And arbitrary thing elevated. That's just that's not going to work. Yeah. No. No. There, there's actually a good story out there about running an arbitrary thing elevated and. It's like, well, that was really a bad idea, people. Um, all right. So that, right? Yes. Good. I think we're we're all set here. All right. Moving on. Done with triage. So back riding whips. And so this isn't something I thought about deeply, but basically it comes back to should we write whips for features that already exist? And you kind of get to, you know, what should their number be and what should their type be and stuff like that. And so I knew one time we, um, and then the follow on to that is, you know, should we use WIPs instead of documentation? Um, what kind of documentation? Huh? Well, the stuff that's in the chum, for example. So, so sorry, user documentation, not. Yes, not developer documentation. I mean, well, we, yeah, okay. my, my general statement was Whips. we didn't have developer documentation in the past beyond the code. Right. So, right, right. so, um, so I guess should whips be backwritten for existing features? And I mean, they're not improvements; they're the documentation at that point. So, part of me is like, no, we should, if we want to do write something like about burn and how it works and all that kind of stuff, we could go write it as you know, here's documentation about that. Although the format of a whip is reasonable. Um, so I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know where to land on backwriting whips for existing features. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, Bob? Uh, I mean, it's not a, I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, it, it uh, yeah, I, I guess I see the biggest value in a whip against an existing feature as when you might be wanting to change it. But then, uh, so if you're going to change it, then you have a new whip. Yeah. Well, yes. And yeah, I'm fine I, if in the new whip right, you describe right. the existing behavior. So. Yeah. Right. Right. That's what that is. Um, yeah, I wouldn't lose any sleep if we had them. I don't know that, that whips in particular add a lot of value versus just being, you know, uh, a page in the in the chum that. Or website that is, you know, in roughly the same format, answering the same questions and addressing the same the same issues, I think is a good thing for for an existing feature. Um, so so I guess I would go from there. On the second thing, I, I'm Wix are designed for Wix developers, um, and they can be used. They can be interesting to end users if they want to see what the hell we were thinking when we did something. But I still think we write user end user documentation about how to use stuff, and we don't point to whips as the answer to those um, as user documentation, right? The, the audiences are different for these two things. So, Theoretically. Yeah, I mean, well, we need to write things such that people don't have to know necessarily how all the stuff is implemented underneath. To get it. For example, if you just want to know how to do Wix standard BA and the theme and all that kind of stuff, you know, we should have a documentation page. We don't, but we should. That has, you know, here's how you write a theme with all these things. Not, and by the way, theme util does this and it, you know, does these kinds of things that it's loaded by the Wix standard BA in this way. It's like I don't really care. I just want to have a theme, right? And if you want to go out and understand, you know, how we change things, stuff like that, maybe you can go find whips for them. Um, I, I was mostly jo joking about the current state of Wix documentation. Oh. Well, there, there's that. And the other thing is, I don't think we should be pulling 
I don't know that we should be pulling user documentation out of the chum and onto the website. I think the website for developer stuff for uh, you know us is fine because we'll go there, we'll look at the development tab in the website and you know work our way through that stuff. I I I still believe that users should be able to get the chum and do all their work. Stuff like burn security model impacts SAP developer, but isn't really user documentation. Well, our users are setup developers, so if there's something about the security model that they need to know, then we should include some of that in the documentation. For example, the documentation saying that your BA does not run elevated, unless you do funky, horrible things that you sh probably shouldn't be doing, is a thing that we should say, right? And also saying that, you know, changes the machine must be in the execution, uh, chain, and you know you should be thinking about your chain as doing these things. Your BA should not be modifying machine state. Yada yada yada. That's all stuff we should describe there. Um, and then anything else that we want to go. Remember, if you put an executable in the chain, it will be running elevated. So beware that it could do any damage to the user's machine. That's all stuff we should definitely be putting in there for the user. But I mean, we don't need to talk about how you know the non-elevated machine or the non-elevator process launches the elevator process sets up a name pipe passes you know all these data back and forth and messages and stuff like that that's that's a level beyond what i think the the, the typical end user developer needs um or would or wish to live in the chum right and then i think it's fine for us to have all that kind of stuff in whips or documentation on the website does that sound reasonable i'm this is just kind of off you know my thinking. I guess I want it would be good, and we don't necessarily do this everywhere or as well as we could, but really having documentation in the chum, which of course also is duplicated on the website for search engines, that they can read is good. Uh, that's entirely possible. I haven't, so Sean mentions that he has a whip that should be stuff in the chum, and that's entirely possible. I haven't got around to reading it yet. Um, but if you think that any developer, I'd split it this way. If you think that would be useful information, or sorry, information that all Wix users should have seen, people, you know, people that hang out solely on Wix users, then yes, I agree it should be in the chum. If you think that it's stuff that only people that hang out on Wix devs would need, then it should can be a whip. I think that's probably a pretty simple way of thinking about it. Does that sound right, Bob? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, and then yes, and adding more content to the chum would be for burn would be fantastic because there's a lot of stuff that's not written down that you kind of have to go searching for. So that would I think that's totally cool. So um, Sean, I also know you made a lot of changes. I saw you sent two changes on yesterday for documentation changes for about burn. So um, should we? I don't want to do that right now. We should take a look at those and see where they should go best. Um, and we'll, we can go talk about that on Wix Steps. But does that generally make sense? I mean, I'm, I'm happy to entertain dissenting opinions, too. I mean, I, you know, it's, I think that's pretty clean, and I think it will be actually match what people, general users of the Wix tool set, would expect. Um, cool. So as for back writing a whip, I, I don't... What number would you give a backwritten whip? Um, if, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter a whole lot. It, it doesn't. Probably, you know, probably you want to create a feature even if it's immediately resolved. I don't want to create a feature just to write about something that already existed. Uh... I mean, we could, but I, I don't know how else you get a get a useful number. You won't have, I mean, yeah. you know, non-duplicate, blah 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 blah. Um, fine. We'll 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 we'll, we'll call it. Given that, we'll just say, look, if you want to write a if you want to back write a whip, just open a feature as a task. <laughs> Here's my feature. My feature is I'm going to write this documentation, and then we'll use that as the whip. It's a little fo funky, but we can just do it that way. 
and that'll save us from worrying about getting an extra overlapping number and all that kind of stuff. Is that too onerous? It's a little goofy. Tell you what, if someone's going to go through the trouble to back write whips and they really don't want to create the issue, I'll do it for you. Because <laughs> if you're willing to do documentation, I'll do the, the silly overhead of having an issue to track the feature. That sounds reasonable, right? Sure. There you go. I'll do a little extra work for some of that. Of course, if you want to do it yourself, I'll do that. Which means that the process is, the process as we described it, is just the title of the feature will be writing a whip for, you know, how burn does X or whatever. Yes? Cool? Does that solve all our problems? Simple solutions? I don't know. At a certain point, this feels like process for process sake, and I'm not terribly interested in that, so let's do something simple. All right. I think that's enough on back writing whips. Um, so should backs, should be whips be written for existing features? Sure. Open a feature. It says you're writing a, a whip for an existing feature. It'll be a feature. Should whips be used in lieu of documentation? No. We should still write documentation for users. And the audiences are, think of something that Wix users type uh, attendees would get and Wix devs attendees would get. Documentation is for Wix users types. Whips are for Wix devs types. There we go. Quick summary. Works. Anything else? Anything else going on out there in the outside world? Wide except stuff? Um, Eric just pointed out that uh, mailing list may be getting processed this morning, so we may get Wix at Wix Toolset or Wix Devs at Wix Toolset.org up and running again. If so, we'll send out a mail saying, "Hey, everybody, try to join this. Kick the tires like we did last time when it didn't hold up as well as we hoped it would." Um, and if it all turns off, turns out well, then we'll move Wix Devs there. Make sure that holds together for a little while longer, and then we'll talk about the process of moving. Uh, the masses from Wix users to Wix users at wixtoolset.org, which I think is just fantastically exciting. So that wasn't a question. I guess that was a comment on Eric Schultz's comment that he had at the beginning of this before we started. Anything else? Luckily, luckily comments are allowed per the slide. Per the slide. Yes, and Eric Schultz is very happy. So I think on that note, we're going to end at a half hour, which I think is pretty good for this meeting. Um, I thought it was going to be more like a five-minute meeting, but since we ended up talking about actual stuff, that's great. And hopefully we've unblocked Sean, who's been doing awesome work. He's actually been commenting on some of the work that Fire Giant sent around recently, too, and found some things. So it's like, yay! I saw that stuff come in. So um, rock and roll, keep coding. Um, Sean, you're on my list of things. I will go get through all your pull requests and take a look at all of them, because it's on my list of things to do. Um, and I guess that's it. Yes? Yes? Anything else, Bob? I'm good. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week, and uh, keep coding. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.